Hey YouTube, this is Drew Howden Tech here to show you how to set up a home Minecraft server on Ubuntu server. So why would you want to do this? Well, maybe you want to have a dedicated Minecraft server in your house that you can play on with your friends and family, or you want to host a Minecraft server for the whole world. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so now first thing you're going to want to do is download the Ubuntu server ISO from this link, which I'll have in the description. And then you're going to want to go with the LTS download. Don't worry about any intermediary releases, if there are any. I'd recommend staying away from using short-term intermediary releases and only using long-term support versions. Because long-term support versions have more support and are generally more stable. At the time of shooting this video, Ubuntu Server 20.04 LTS is the latest LTS version. But anyway, on the LTS version, you're going to click download. And then you're going to want to save the file. Now I've already downloaded this file. I get it right here in my VMware folder. And then what you're going to want to do is make a bootable flash drive out of that ISO file. I made a video showing you how to do that. I'll link it up in the card. And by the way, I don't have a machine that I'm going to use as a Minecraft server because I'm just doing this for the sake of showing you how to set up a Minecraft server. So I'm going to be using a virtual machine to do this. But the behavior and everything will be the same. But anyway, you're going to want to power on your server, then go to the boot menu, and then plug in your Ubuntu server flash drive and then boot from it. All right, and then it'll bring you to this screen where you select your language. I'm gonna be choosing English. And then if you get this message, you're gonna hit upgrade to the new installer. All right, and then you're going to want to select your keyboard layout. Mine is already selected. And then it'll go ahead and set up your network. Now you can use the IP address that it gives you, or you can create a static IP. It's up to you. Just note this number because you'll need it to connect to the server. But anyway, you're going to hit done, 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 and then done, done, continue. And now just set up your account. I'm going to call myself Drew Howden Tech. Your server's name, I'm going to call this server Minecraft Server. It'll only allow you to put lowercase letters, numbers, and hyphens in the name. But anyway, I'm going to make my username Drew, and then you can choose a password. Now, especially with a server, you always want a strong password, because if you don't, well, that is how you get hacked. But anyway, I'm going to hit Done, and then you're going to install OpenSSH Server then hit done, then hit tab, then done. And then it'll go ahead and install Ubuntu server. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. And then when it goes and downloads security updates, you're just gonna let it do its thing. All right, then once the installation's finished, you're gonna hit reboot. And then once it says, please remove the installation medium, then press enter. Then of course, you're gonna take out your Ubuntu server install drive, then hit enter. And then it'll go and reboot. And then we get to the main part of the process. All right, then once your server is fully rebooted, you're gonna log in with your username and password. And if you ever forget your server's IP address, just type IP A, and then your server's IP address will be somewhere in there. Like look for something like 192.168.0. whatever. But anyway, you can do the configuration from here, but you may want to work from your computer instead. So what you're gonna do is open up terminal or command prompt on your computer, then type SSH, your username, and this is your username on the server, not your username on your computer, at your server's IP address. And then if it brings up this message, just type yes. And then type in your password on your server, then hit enter, then there we go. So now the first thing we want to do is sudo passwd root, then hit enter, then enter your password, then hit enter, then enter a root password. Like, I'd strongly recommend making this super long. Like, so long and complicated that the average person cannot remember it. Now, if you want to know why you should run this, I made a video showing you why. I'll link it up in the card. But anyway, now we're going to check for updates by running sudo apt update. And it says that there are updates. So we're going to run sudo apt upgrade, then hit enter, then hit enter again. And then we'll go ahead and download and install any updates. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, now once that update's done, then we can get into the actual meat of the process. So first, we're going to type sudo apt install open jdk 11 jre. Then hit enter, then hit enter again.
All right, and then once that's done installing, you're gonna type mkdir minecraft, and then this just created a folder called Minecraft, and then you're gonna type cd Minecraft, and then we just went into our Minecraft folder. And now you're gonna go to this link, which I'll have in the description, to get the Minecraft server jar file. And then once you're there, you're gonna right click on the Minecraft server jar file, and then click copy link location. And then you're gonna type wget and paste that link in there. So now this is where doing this over SSH really helps you, because then you can just copy and paste the link in. If you're doing it directly on your server, you're gonna have to type it in manually, just saying. But anyway, you're gonna hit enter, and then we'll go ahead and download the Minecraft server jar file. All right, and then once that's done downloading, you're gonna type java-xmx, 1024M. Now this tells the Minecraft server to never use more than one gigabyte of RAM. Now for a normal configuration, I'd actually recommend doing dash XMX 2048M to tell it to never use more than two gigs of RAM. But since I'm on a VM with only two gigs of RAM, I'm doing XMX 1024M because you should never allocate more than half of your server's RAM to the Minecraft server just to avoid crashing it. But anyway, then you're gonna type dash XMS 1024M. Now this tells the server to start out using one gigabyte of RAM. And then you're gonna type dash jar server dot jar no GUI. Now the no GUI part tells it to not open a graphical user interface because since we're on a server, we don't need to get that kind of overhead. But anyway, then once you got that command typed in, you're gonna hit enter and then you'll get these errors. That's totally normal. And what you need to do is type nano eula.txt then hit enter, then find the EULA equals false line, and then change this to EULA equals true. Then hit control X, then hit Y, then hit enter. Then you're gonna run that same Java command again, and then it'll start initializing your Minecraft server and creating the world. All right, then once our Minecraft server is deployed, we can join the server by opening up Minecraft, then clicking multiplayer, then we can click a direct connection just to test it, and then type in your server's IP address under server address, then hit join server. And then you'll be in your Minecraft server's world. I'm getting a low frame rate only because I have a lot of stuff running in the background. Like I have this running in addition to a virtual machine and screen recording, but your frame rate will be higher, don't worry. And then on the server, we can run administrative commands. You can type help to see all of them. And you also don't need to use a slash. For example, if we wanted to change the difficulty to peaceful, we type difficulty peaceful, then hit enter. And then there we go. It'll set our difficulty to peaceful, as you can see right here. And now by default, this game is in survival mode. If you want to play in creative mode, you just type game mode creative and then if you wanted to set it just for you you'd type in your username but in my case i'd want to set it for all players then i can type at a then hit enter and then it'll change the game to creative mode and also we can even do more administrative commands for example if you wanted to have a white list you just do white list on and then there we go if we disconnect and then try to reconnect for a non-whitelisted player it'll say you're not whitelisted on the server and then to add someone to the whitelist you can just type whitelist add and then the username then hit enter, and now if I try to join again, I can join. And then if you want to see the whitelist, you just type whitelist list, then hit enter, and then it'll show the whitelist. Now if you wanted to remove someone from the whitelist, you just type whitelist remove, and then the username of the player that you want to remove from the whitelist, and then hit enter, and then there you go, that player is removed from the whitelist. And if you change your mind about a whitelist, you can just type whitelist off, and there we go, as you can see, whitelists off now. Now let's say you want to ban a player. Say they're causing a lot of trouble on the server, like they're destroying other people's buildings. You can just type ban, and then the name of the player that you want to ban, then hit enter, and then the other person would immediately lose their connection and say you were banned from this server. And then if they go to reconnect, it'll say failed to connect to server, you are banned from the server, reason banned by an operator. Now if you wanted to unban someone, you just type pardon, and then the username of the person that you want to unban. 
then hit enter, and then it'll go and unban, and then they can log in to play once again. Now, if you wanted to parse out a message to everyone on the server, you just type say, and then whatever message you want, then hit enter, and then it'll parse out your message to everyone playing. Now, if you just wanted to say something to a specific player, you just type W, the username of the player that you want to send the message to, and then just type your message. This is actually really useful if you want to say something like, stop burning other people's buildings or you will be banned from the server anything like that, but then anyway you can just hit enter, and then it'll say server whispers to you and then whatever message you typed. And lastly, if you just wanted to kick someone off rather than ban them outright, like just to give them the memo that they're breaking your server's rules, you could just type kick, then the name of the player whose session you want to end, then hit enter, and then it'll say on their end connection lost kicked by an operator. Now there is an important difference between kicking and banning though. If you kick someone off, they could simply just reconnect. However, if you ban them, they won't be able to reconnect. But anyway, you can figure out the rest of these commands on your own time, since the rest is pretty much beyond the scope of this video. But anyway, if you wanted to take your server offline, you just hit stop, then hit enter, and then it'll go ahead and save the world and take it offline. And then everyone will get kicked off. Then if you will ever want to reboot your server, you can just type sudo shut down now dash r, then enter your password, then hit enter. And then it'll go ahead and reboot your server. By the way, if you wanted to, to stay off, to move it for example, just just type sudo shutdown now without the dash r. And that is how you set up a home Minecraft server on Ubuntu server. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.